Welcome to another episode of the Prince Virus Decode, where we get experts to answer some of your questions as India battles the third wave of the COVID pandemic. India reported some 2.64 uh, lakh new cases of COVID in the last 24 hours, and that is a 6.7% increase from Thursday. Uh, in yesterday's episode, we did talk about how despite the surge in cases, hospitalizations have not been too high. Uh, in fact, government officials have even told the print that the country is equipped to handle a surge of up to 10 to 20 lakh cases daily. And you can see that report by my colleague Abhantika Ghosh on the print website today. Uh, Abhantika has been tracking the health beat and she will be answering your questions regarding the pandemic through this episode. We also have uh, two experts with us today. Uh, Dr. Rajesh Dere, who is in charge of Jumbo COVID centers in Mumbai and is the head of forensic medicine at Sion Hospital in Mumbai. We also have with us Dr. Ravi Basandapuram, uh, head of research and development at Tata Medical and Diagnostics, which has developed Omishore, the first kit, the first test kit to be approved in India that can detect the Omicron variant of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I'd like to ask our viewers to first, uh, you know, start sending in all your questions so that we can have the experts uh, answer them and try to take, I'll try to take up as many as possible during this episode. Uh, but before that, before we go to our viewer questions, I have a question for you, Dr. Rajesh, uh, the experience for Mumbai, you know, it has not been easy. It's, it's been, it's going to be two years that uh, healthcare workers have been, uh, you know, struggling to cope with this pandemic. So uh, what I want to want to know from you is how has this wave been, you know, any different? Has it been different for health facilities in Mumbai? You mean to say third wave? If you compare with first and second wave? Right. Or, or you know, uh, Mumbai has seen more than uh, a few waves, right? I mean, there have been several waves of Mumbai. No, this is, uh, I think, uh, this is our third wave. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in last November, we anticipated a third wave. Mm -hmm. But maybe due to better vaccination and uh, better management, uh, that wave uh, has just subsided. And this is new wave, we can say it is a third wave, already established third wave. Mm -hmm. since first week of January. Now, if, if I compare my experience with the first wave, second wave, and third wave, I can practically say that these wave numbers are exponentially increasing. The positivity rate is, I think, twice or thrice than the second wave or first wave. But mm -hmm. undoubtedly, this Omicron variant is milder one and mortality is very very less if i compare with the second wave and the first wave in mumbai second wave the delta variant uh, uh, we could see you know there was sudden rise in the number of patient requiring oxygen and the bipap or hdu facility or we can say intensive care facilities so in that way, by number, this wave is much bigger than the second wave or first wave. But if you go through the component of mortality or morbidity, it is very, very less than second or first wave. Right. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting that you've, you've joined us on a very busy day, it seems. And uh, I would like to thank you once again for, uh, no, no, no. you know... <laughs> coming in because obviously this it uh, you know has this is a pandemic that has dragged on for much longer than any of us expected uh, coming to dr ravi um, congratulations first of all for getting the approval for the omni shock kit which uh, you know is it's it's a kit a, a test kit that helps detect the omicron variant uh, but you know I, I'm a little skeptical about how relevant it is right now, once now that we know that the 
variant is widespread in india would it not have been more in useful as a screening tool when when you know the variant was not already circulating so what exactly do you think how relevant would its use be right now when we know that you know most of the cases that we are seeing are because of omicron thank you very much uh, this is a question that has been uh, posed to me in several forums so uh, i do understand why people ask this question mm -hmm. diagnosis of omicron specifically has certain relevance and value in the current situation first and foremost would be when clusters appear in areas for the first time right now the infection is restricted to large metros very soon it will be moving to this is what we have seen in india and sure dr rajesh will agree with me it yeah. started in mumbai or bangalore or delhi and then it it kind of moves out peripherally after a couple of weeks so in that context it will be important to know if the new clusters in areas that have not reported them earlier is it omicron or not number 1 number 2 uh, for tracing and tracking especially in newer areas a test is at least required in a small number so that it can help in control measures number 3 the biggest value i see is for individuals whatever said and done there is a fear in people whether they are going to have complications are not right if somebody is detected as omicron positive it gives a huge sense of relief that's what uh, i believe is one of the values and lastly from the clinical point of view i would say that there is a small proportion of delta still doing the rounds and it's relevant to distinguish omicron from delta and also there is this huge expensive monoclonal antibody cocktail which is being used by many clinicians we know that omicron has a large number of mutations in its spike protein and these cocktails do not work effectively so you can unnecessarily avoid a treatment that is not relevant so that is the the fourth place i see so there are four situations i see uh, where omicron and secondly and lastly most important there is a huge demand for genomic sequencing whether we like it or not people are asking and i see dr rajesh nodding his head they, they everybody wants a sequencing to be done and it's such an it's yeah. not a sequencing is not a routine diagnostic test it's hugely resource intensive it's time consuming and from whatever results we got from the evaluation by icmr the the results of the omi sure had shown 100% concordance with uh, with the uh, genomic sequencing i'm not saying that will will continue like that but that itself is a it was very very uh, encouraging for us to see that result so this is here is a simple pcr which is being used as a routine diagnostic tool across the country there is no extra infrastructure or technical expert expertise required for it it also detects all other variants it's not that this somewhere some people are mis misunderstood it can only pick up omicron no the icmr evaluation very clearly showed that it is 100% sensitive even for other variants so i think there is a, and your your one in your question you said would it not have been better if we had uh, done it earlier i think this is one of the fastest global developments november 26th the omicron was Uh, announced december 26th icmr was evaluating it production has been uh, a little bit of a challenge primarily because raw material has to come from 
outside the country and most of the countries outside were closed between 25th of uh, between 20th of december up to the first week of this year because of christmas and new year if if not for that our kit would have been in the market probably 15 days early so that's my response thank you right so you uh, thank you that that was actually a lot of uh, you know interesting uh, points that i take from that one that uh, our you know everyone is right now a lot more curious uh, you know this is one of the first pandemics that we've seen in a era that that is so uh, how do i put it like it's it's full of information everyone has access to a lot more information and they are curious and uh, and and secondly yes that it definitely the all the developments uh, from right from vaccines to uh, testing kits they have been a lot faster in this pandemic than we have ever seen in uh, public health before so definitely you know a lot of um, unprecedented developments in science and uh, health because of the pandemic so that's one positive side um abundika coming to you uh, you know we again we have uh, sort of talked about this a lot in our previous episodes as well uh, about home testing and about how the uh, focus of you know of of testing has sort of shifted and uh, there is more enc- uh, encouragement from the health ministry as well to get to sort of test yourself to screen yourself at home using home test kits uh, how how prepared are we do we have enough tests for you know everyone to be buying and keeping tests at home um yeah so it uh right now i can i can tell you the numbers that are currently there right now there are about uh, seven companies that are approved uh, by icmr uh, which are between them they are producing about 1.2 crore uh, antigen test kits per week that's the kind of capacity we are looking at now if if you are asking me if every one of the 130 plus crore indians can buy this i'm i'm not sure anybody can produce that amount of kits um but i think we sh- we are fairly comfortable there uh, so far unless we start hoarding as we sometimes tend to we've seen that in the past with medicines and all but currently we do seem comfortable uh, the tests are affordable and um, also i'm sure i don't need to say that but um the test has to have a reason i mean it it uh, just just because we ha- happen to have antigen tests um we don't need to do it every day right it's like you know there are specific situations where you need to test right when you you've come in contact with somebody you're symptomatic or say you you have to go and meet some elderly family members in fact in the second case it is actually good uh, to do more than one test you know okay. uh, because uh, the antigen tests also have a tendency of giving uh, false negatives like i we were just talking before this program that if you are symptomatic and if you get yourself tested with a home testing kit and you are negative um then you should still go for an rt pcr because uh, you want to be sure you i mean you don't want to infect others so uh, there there are many situations in fact um, you know currently our uh, advisory says that if if you are not symptomatic and if you come in contact with somebody you don't have to test at all that's the testing strategy change that we saw uh, you know this week so uh, yeah i i would say i mean to answer your question i would say we should be comfortable because uh, the test uh, the test kit manufacturing capacity should go up in the coming days i'm sure right uh, you know we'll come back to the question about who should get tested when and uh, you know what what exactly is the science behind that but before that uh, dr rajesh i just wanted to hear from you you know uh can you share some insights about the kind of patients who are uh, uh, experiencing severe covid at this time like uh, are the number of those who are vaccinated very high among the people who lost their lives in this wave or, or are getting hospitalized in this wave uh basically speaking in this wave 
uh, hardly 5% pe uh, patient require little bit amount of o2 supply for treatment and uh, less than 1% patient require severe o2 when severe o2 wards are uh, the wards where we give more than 6 to 8 liters of oxygen per minute uh, so that is the present status uh, so we can easily say in this omicron or in this third wave uh, we are not much bothered about icu facilities or o2 requirement uh, which we were bothered during second wave you might have heard there was acute crisis of oxygen in most of the part of city of this country so this time i don't feel this variant maybe uh, the genome sequencing result what we have done 57% is omicron variant and the remaining part is either delta or a mixed variant but still oxygen is not a large requirement but we need to be watchful as somewhere i have read a research article in which four days before one country has uh, projected that there are five cases which are admitted in high definition unit is a part of icu for some delicron type of variant now if there is such mixed type of infection in coming days then we should be watchful and be ready for this icu services and the oxygen capacity right uh, you know uh, that actually uh, was my next question to uh, dr ravi uh, we we right now are you know we we are ready with the nomi sure test but how uh, quickly can we adapt this for uh, you know different uh, kinds of variants like for example uh, around last year we did hear a lot about the feluda test the, the crispr based paper strip test that was supposed to be able to um, you know identify different kinds of variants and those could be tweaked with quickly um i guess there uh, there was feluda ray the ray was another uh, uh, kind of test so so what happened to those and why did why aren't we not seeing more of those in the market thank you for asking that question uh, the feluda test if you remember was also a tata md product yes uh, in terms of science feluda was very high because it used crispr technology but in in terms of applicability it had certain limitations a peluda there is multiplexing possibility is much much less it's very challenging you can only look at one gene and an internal control at a time as compared to rt pcr and secondly the cost of raw materials for peluda because it involves all pcr reagents plus crispr reagents it can never ever match the cost sometime in november which dr rajesh was referring last year internationally the prices of raw material for uh, for uh, pcr really crashed so much that it came to almost 100 rupees no feluda cannot match that and in terms of your question this omisure more than a product what i want to tell is we have developed a new platform a new platform where within a matter of weeks you can adapt to a emergence of a new variant we have a team in fact i'm very proud of my team we have people in my team who do everyday variant watching what is variant watching globally we download all the sequences of omicron then we look at the regions that we are amplifying the primers and the probes and we continuously ask ourselves is our test being impacted or not and we also have as a backup a second line of primers and probes ready with us should some omicrons be missed we would be able to pitch in immediately and thirdly this technology when we developed it we did not have a single clinical sample so we have a new method of developing a test what we did was we developed a synthetic gene of omicron based on the public se- uh, published uh, sequences in the global database we got it completely synthesized on a machine and that is what we used as a positive control in the test so when we went to 
to be honest when we went to icmr we had never evaluated on a clinical sample it was only with the synthetic gene mm -hmm. that itself tells you that that kind of a platform is working it will work and we were both icmr and we were very very pleasantly surprised to see the accuracy of this particular test so i think in terms of science omishur is a great advancement in terms of adaptability it can be very quick and one more thing i wanted to tell you which i forgot in the first response i gave it to you you asked what is the value of uh, just like omishur i think the value is if sars cov is detected but it's not omicron it has great relevance to what dr rajesh said right. is it delta is it a mixed variant yes. and as a person in public health for 40 years i would like to say that those are the samples that should go for sequencing you don't have to waste your resources on omicron here is a test that reliably gives yeah. you omicron result so i think i think there there are many many takeaways for us both from the science point of view and public utility point of view thank you that's that's actually very interesting especially about uh, you know um, uh, other variants being just as in fact actually more uh, you know uh, dangerous or more uh, cause of concern so uh, we have some uh, you know viewer questions coming in some of them we have already answered actually uh, but uh, i think uh, abuntika if if you will take this one uh, this is from prithvi uh, who is asking should we go for an rt pcr if uh, rat that is a rapid antigen uh, test uh, uh, turns out to be negative so you did talk about you know uh, how if you have symptoms then you should actually go for an rt pcr uh, even if your rat turns out to be negative but can you um, give us you know some idea the science behind what what is the window during which you should go for uh, a, a rapid antigen test right so uh, i showed this graph uh, some time back in in our program let me just go back to it and show it once more because i i I find this graph very fascinating and very easy to explain. I don't know if you can see it. Can you? Yes. 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 No. Yes. Yeah. So that that shaded part, which is day two to day eight, is roughly also the time when you are most likely to test positive with uh, a rapid antigen test, a lateral flow test, a rapid antigen test, a home antigen test, whatever you might uh, want to call it. Um, and that's also that also happens to be the uh, time period when you're most infectious. Uh, so, so right now our uh, home isolation guidelines actually say that uh, by day eight, by day seven, you should, you know, you, you can get out if if you have not had fever for three days, and that is based on this this concept of infectivity. But that is also the period when your rat is most likely to come positive. Uh, but the problem with rat. Uh, once again, uh, you know, I'm sort of repeating myself. The problem with that is even when you test during this period, even when the timing is absolutely perfect to the T, it can still miss the infection. You know, it, this 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 is said everywhere that. So one way of doing it is uh, actually that's why the concept of repeat test, because then you're, you're less likely to get, um, you know, false negatives every time. So you repeat the test. That's one way of doing it. Um, and I mean, CDC, you look at any any sort of uh, any of these advisories uh, issued by any of these bodies, everybody says that when you when you especially when you are symptomatic and you test negative with the uh, rat, uh, it's no guarantee that you don't have the infection. Uh, so that that is why uh, it's better to always go for an RT-PCR if you are symptomatic. Right. Uh, you know, uh, the next question from Joydeep Pandey. Uh how can how we can differentiate between seasonal viral fever and covid symptoms uh, uh doctor um, sorry i'm the doctor rajesh if you would like to take this because i think this is a question that everyone has i also have a runny nose <laughs> and i'm wondering <laughs> how to tell the difference between uh you know do i have covid or do i uh, have a, a flu use the home test <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah ideally uh you know, it's very difficult to differentiate this uh, URTI upper respiratory tract symptoms what we have. Now, even in non-COVID URTI, you can have rhinitis, 
you can have a sore throat you can have mild fever and you can have a body ache and same you can see in this new variant now what was different you know in the previous variant uh, which is not seen in this is loss of taste loss of smell and in second uh, wave i think of the delta variant there was cough with some expectorate which is not seen in this wave this is what we can differentiate otherwise what madam has said you have to go for home test and if doubtful uh, you go for rt pcr and confirm yourself and do necessary treatment for this but again i would say that uh, even though it is a milder variant uh, i could uh, just speak of my experience in wave 2 of the delta variant you know uh, most of the people even in that time also home quarantine was allowed by government uh, policies also but what people used to do once they are infected uh, maybe they are asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic uh, and their saturation is more than 94 or 95 they would sit at home without monitoring themselves there is no agency to monitor and suddenly you know in second wave we have seen many more cases on day 3 or day 4 their saturation was near to 90 88 92 which required oxygen so uh, i would say even though you are home isolating yourself a uh, patient should have a self monitoring system now you know if we cannot expect the healthcare community or your doctor also to monitor you daily when you are isolated at home but you yourself can make some guidelines just like uh, we made in bkc in the second wave those who are doing home quarantine uh, just having your spo to monitoring very frequently temperature then you take basic medications and symptomatic if you require just like dolo or antipyretic and you should go for your ct value if your viral load is more then you should surely start with antiviral drug under guidance uh, of your medical practitioner so this should be i think the people should do when they are at home quarantine because we don't know even this in milder variant maybe day 4 or day 5 the least percent of the patient may also land up in you know some respiratory distress which may require o2 suddenly right right so uh, you know like i think the take away from this is that if at a, at a time when uh, covid is so widespread it would be safer to assume uh, to you know like to be on the safe side to just get yourself tested if you're seeing um, flu like symptoms it's it's i mean i think that's the safest way to go um all right uh, so okay we have a question um uh, from didhya who uh, is asking do you think a uh, covid 19 is airborne so i think uh, at this point in the pandemic uh, the scientific consensus is that uh, covid 19 is airborne and uh, when we say airborne it does not mean that it is floating around in the air around us it it just means that if you're in the vicinity of a patient uh, of a covid po- positive person who has been exhaling talking sneezed or you know been singing around you basically any form of exhalation the the particles the, there are small droplets that are suspended in the air which uh, is something you do not want to inhale and which is why masks are uh, one of the most effective ways of uh, reducing uh, you know uh, the infection rate i'm sorry i i took the liberty of answering this question because oh, you you did great but yeah, okay. i have <laughs> one line to it it's airborne only to the extent that it needs a car to carry it from one place to another that car is the particle aerosol what whatever Uh, the sneezing coughing particles airborne particles whatever so it's not airborne in the sense it doesn't have wings it needs something to carry it that's that's all right and it does not mean it 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 is also very short lived so it's uh, something that if you're in a closed room with a lot of people and one person is positive and the room is not well well ventilated your risk of catching the infection goes up and uh, these are some of the things that we need to um, you know keep in mind uh, in in case any other panelist wants to add something to this I, otherwise i'll move to the next question um 
All right. Uh, so Prithvi is saying, I think the sellers of RAT kits must be compulsorily made to send their reports to the concerned agency of the government. How was this missed? Um, Dr. Rav, uh, Ravi, would you like to take this? Your voice was uh, a little cracking. Yeah, is it so, about home test? You're yeah, asking? About, about home test. Uh, you know, like... Yeah, the, the requirement for a home test is that you upload your results to a portal, yeah. which usually Avatika can correct me if I'm wrong, which is which hosts the data on the cloud and which which will communicate to the health authorities as well. Most of most people do that, but you, there is always a chance some people may not report the results on the portal. Right. Uh I think that's what we did speak about this, uh, you know, in the last uh, episode as well, that the onus of uh, reporting and of, uh, you know, ensuring that you are monitoring yourself has shifted a lot to the patients now uh, because, uh, you know, you know, with, with uh, self-isolation, with uh, self-testing, you can also now go and report, um, you know, yourself positive. You don't need the authorities to handhold you for everything because I think, Two years in, we do know a lot more about the pandemic. Um, you know, like, uh, I'm just checking if we have anything that has not been answered. Uh, again, uh, after how many days of symptom scan and antigen test be considered effective? I think, Abantika, we already, uh, you know, uh, we went over this. Um, you know, I think closing comments now. We've uh, we've taken most of the questions that we had. We've had a lot of uh, uh, constructive discussion around uh, tests and when to get tested and what uh, situation we are in right now. Uh, Dr. Dere, uh, you know you you are still in the middle of it. Uh, you're you're still seeing a huge surge of cases daily. You're seeing cases daily. Uh, what what do you want to uh, you know? What would be your uh, what you know message to people around who are again once again we are we are in the middle of uh, today we we saw a festival there is celebrations around and what are the precautions what what is some message that you would want to give to uh, people well uh, precautions you know government of india or every state has its own precautions uh, i should only appeal to my fellow citizens you know in wait for few days, you know, there would be a festival, there would be Diwali every year, there would be birthday celebration every year. Even I am of the view that you can postpone your marriage by one year also. It's nothing wrong, you know. You see, if you see the graph in last, say, 20 to 22 months, whenever there is festival season, marriage season, you know, the number is going up and up. So we people, you know, uh, we people should cooperate with the government agencies. See, we as a citizen of this nation has some responsibility towards our nation. Uh, this is the time, you know, to have this responsibility. Uh, just the saying that healthcare workers are COVID warriors and they are fighting uh, admits these COVID wards and surrounded by all the viral load and they are more prone for infection, mortality, so on and so forth. I think as a citizen of this country, every citizen should feel that I would behave properly in this pandemic. Mask is my shield, you know. Uh, I always compare uh, with our freedom fighting or, you know, previous battles, say Panipat or so. You know, we had a shield and this shield in this pandemic is nothing less than your mask. And that mask has to be N95 or surgical. And, you know, 70% of people have designer masks now. With cloths and, you know, a company emblem and also this we have to avoid now. And please avoid gatherings. Now, I can give you a simple example, you know. We are also staying in societies. In second wave, 70% positive cases were from high rises. You know, you see the Dharavi model of Mumbai, 
hardly there was any case from dharavi you know my dkc or sain hospital is in the vicinity of dharavi when i started as a dean at bkc you know i thought i would get all patient from dharavi itself and my 2500 bed facility of bkc uh, would be uh, not you know compensating or fulfilling the needs of dharavi and bandra slum but i would say numbers are more from high rises simple example i would go don't go every time you know in the evening to just have a walk and going to market and having vegetables and groceries we can go once in a week there are very very you know minimum things which we can avoid and curtail this pandemic and i'm sure that till this year end or diwali uh, we would be surely in the endemic we will have a good herd immunity and hopes of pandemic is over we will live our normal life as early as possible we we really do hope for that it it has been a i mean it it it, it has been a struggle for everyone and of course nothing uh, compared to what the healthcare um, uh, workers have been going through uh urban vikas some you know uh, just uh, just closing words on uh, do you think we are slowing down in terms of infections are we anywhere close to the peak uh, what what do we expect in the coming days those are as as many experts have now started saying those are questions for astrologers uh and i am i am just a journalist but uh, i think numbers will inevitably slow down because our testing strategy has changed very significantly um you know once we stop testing asymptomatic contacts once we once we stop testing patients who are coming into hospitals for routine surgeries and other invasive procedures um that would really bring the numbers down there's no doubt about it i mean one can debate the advisability of such a move especially in hospitals i mean we did a story yesterday on that uh, because doctors have been protesting but the point remains that your testing and this is our first change in testing strategy in a long long time so definitely the numbers will come down your absolute numbers will come down even if your test positivity would probably go up because now your testing as as uh, you know uh, we keep hearing this uh, uh, this comparison a lot that when you spread the net wide you you may catch less fish but when it's concentrated in a place where you know there's more fish then obviously your haul will be better so now now we are doing that sort of testing so obviously test positivity will go up uh, numbers i think wouldn't go down in absolutes but i think the rate of change a uh, would sort of calm a bit how far the peak is is not for me to say right thank you thank you uh, avandika uh, dr ravi uh, i'm not sure if we still have a, a him on there. board can you hear us um, he's there yeah yeah can you hear me mona yes yes so uh, you know just uh, last uh, comment on uh, the use of tests uh, you know what what would your word to be to the public to be uh, you know cautious about uh, the use of tests i think uh, i think we'll have to wrap up here because uh, there is some uh, issue with the connectivity there but uh, thank you thank you uh, for joining us thank you dr dere for taking out you. your thank time you. on a busy busy day and obontika uh, for so many uh, insights and uh, thank you viewers for joining us and for all of your questions and uh, do do be careful about uh, you know do not just because we are hearing the my, word mild being thrown around so much does not mean that we should lower our guard uh, if you haven't gotten vaccinated yet do get your vaccines and stay masked every uh, uh, every time you go outside get yourself tested if you are seeing symptoms um and we hope uh, dr dare's words come true uh, and we we yeah, sure, get sure. over this soon it thank you be, so it much be. it will be madam this year would be our last year for this pandemic that's of sure hope so fingers crossed thank you so much once again this is mona basu for the friends thank, thank you. you for inviting thank you thank, thank you, you very much